Unit 4, Assignment 5, Two-Point Perspective, Part 2. So we have completed the first part of this. I'm assuming that you have put your eight buildings above eye level in the top half of your paper. And now what I'm going to do is show you how to draw two buildings below eye level. We're going to do one on this intersection and one in this intersection. Remember, there are only two types of lines. They either go straight up and down, which are perpendicular to the page, or they go to the vanishing point. Everything has to do that. So when I grade your work, what I'm going to do is exactly that. I'm going to print off a copy of your buildings, and with a ruler, I'm going to check your lines to make sure that they are either lined up with a vanishing point or they are straight up and down. Okay. So now the, the building that you're going to create, we're going to start in this corner. We are going to do a building that goes below eye level. So your below eye level is below the vanishing point. If I took the corner of this building and I took it straight up like this above eye level, you wouldn't see any of the back of this building. So I'm going to take this, this line and I'm going to make it relatively short because I want to preserve the street and um, part of my alleys. So I'm going to make it go just that far. Okay, this is line one. And I'm going to mark on here so that you can see how to do this. Then I'm going to line up with the right side of my vanishing point and I'm going to go this way. Oops, across the, not across the street. So this is line two. Then I'm going to perpendicular. I'm not going to connect the line like this. I'm going to go perpendicular. And I'm going to connect it to the street. So this is line three. One, two, three. That puts it on this street. Then from this bottom, every place where you have a corner, you already have this one going toward the vanishing point. You need a, this one, this one, and this one all going toward the left hand because it's on the left hand side of the street. It's going to go to the left vanishing point. So I'm going to make this line go back as far as I want the building to go back. Then this is line four. Then I'm going to go from this corner back to the vanishing point. This is line five. Then I'm going to go from this corner back to the vanishing point. And this is line six. So now I have the front, I have this side, but I have to define, define this line right here, and I have this side, which is, you don't see it too much on the street unless this building is transparent. So now I'm going to define this. This is what most kids do. Let me make this a little bit longer so you can see how weird it looks. So they'll connect these two lines. Actually, let me this one a little bit longer. So then what they do is just connect these two lines like that. And that's what gives you that odd looking side of the building. If it's not straight up and down and you can see how far out of alignment that is, I'm going to put the line where it's supposed to be. That's the correct line because it's straight up and down. This is the incorrect line. So I'm going to erase that. This is line seven, and it's perpendicular from this corner, it goes straight up and down like this. Once you get line seven, you go from this corner of this line to the right vanishing point. And where it intersects line six creates the top. 
I didn't make line six quite long enough, so I'm going to make it a little bit longer. If I connected it like this, see how far off my ruler is? It's not on the vanishing point. See how it gives that, that kind of trapezoid look? The reason that it looks like that is because it's not on the right vanishing point. So I'm going to go from this corner to this vanishing point and where it connects. That's correct. So I'm going to erase this. See how you, you, you're going to do a lot of erasing in here, so if you do this lightly first, it will make a huge difference. This is part of my road. And since I'm not going to put any more buildings going back that way, I, I make it darker. All right. I'm going to do the same thing on this corner without um, doing the mistakes to show you so that you get a, so you're going to go up. I don't want to go up too far because I want to save this alley. Now I'm going to work mainly with my left vanishing point here. perpendicular to the page. I'm going to go from that corner to the right vanishing point. From this corner to the right vanishing point. From this corner to the right vanishing point. To get this side of the building, I'm going to go straight up and down. And to get the top, I'm going to go to the opposite vanishing point from this corner. Okay, so now I have my eight buildings above and my two buildings below. So you should have a total of ten buildings. Eight above, two below. If I wanted to continue, I'd put another one low below this one. I could put another one here. I could put some behind here. This is the minimum number of buildings that you have to have. You may have more if you would like to. So once you get this, make sure that you check your lines, make sure that everything is going straight up and down or to one of the vanishing points. Okay, the second part of your assignment, I'm sorry, the third part of your assignment is going to be to add details to your cityscape. So here I've just kind of started adding some windows. The same rule applies has to go straight up and down and to the vanishing point. If you're adding windows that um, are going to be symmetrical or lined up, make sure that you measure, use with the ruler. I've shown you down here like these doors. I did not do that and see how they kind of look out of sorts with the clean, um, perfectly to scale building. If you don't do it, so that it lines up and you get exact measurements on it and do it consistently, it looks kind of funny. 
Um, the other thing that I want you to do um, for this assignment is put in all your details. You can add um, sidewalks down here by simply adding another line. Um, you can put in the street, the sidewalk crossings. The, you could put in street lights. You could put trees and vegetation. But you also need to have a light source. And so the light source on this one is going to go from this direction. Then you're going to, with um, colored pencils, you're going to color the buildings based on the light source. So if the light source is coming in this side, this side of your building is going to be light and this side of your building is going to be dark. This side of your building is light, this one dark. Light, dark. So when you color in the building in colored pencils, if this is a window, you're going to color around here and you're going to make it a light color, say a light yellow. Then when you get to this side of the building, because it's dark, you're going to maybe do a dark orange. So that you have a lighter color on this side, a darker color on this side. And pay attention to your color combinations and how they work together. Light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, light, dark. Same thing over here, light, dark. This one's going to be light, this one's going to be dark. Light, light. Okay? If you have any questions about this assignment, make sure you email me. Um, have fun with the details. Some of these can be very intricate. I've had students do all kinds of things. Um, satellite dishes, uh, helicopter pads, all kinds of stuff on the cityscape. So um, have some fun with it.